Hey, what's up? I'm Adam with Aerial Motion Photography, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys some tips on how to fly your DJI Mini 3 safely indoors. So if that sounds interesting, let's get into it. Okay, these tips work for other drones, but in this example, I'm doing the Mini 3. So the first thing that I do when I wanna fly indoors is I go into the settings in the DJI Fly app. And when you're looking at the screen, you're gonna to wanna to click those three dots in the top right hand corner. And we're gonna make a couple changes to make flying inside safer. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to turn obstacle avoidance off. That may seem a little counterintuitive, but if you think about it, with all these sensors that the Mini 3 has, when you're flying indoors, you're usually pretty close to walls, fixtures and things like that. So you're gonna to wanna to turn the obstacle avoidance off because if you leave it on, the drone just will hover in place. Like it won't let you fly because it's just gonna think you're gonna hit things. So you have to turn the obstacle avoidance off. The next thing that I do is I scroll all the way down to the bottom and I go to advanced safety settings. So from there, this is where you get to change what happens if the signal is lost. Okay, so usually I have it set at return to home and that makes sense because if you are flying like outside, your drone loses some signal, you want it to come back to you. But when you're flying inside, you do not want the drone to come back to you because you are flying indoors with the ceiling that's a lot lower than the minimum 65 feet the app gives you. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to change it to hover. So now that it's set to hover, if signal is ever lost, um, the drone won't just return to home and hit the roof, it will just hover in place. And then another tip that I have is if you go back into the settings and you go to control, and then you're gonna scroll down to gain and expo, and you're gonna click onto that, and this is where it gives you a couple options. So you see like cine, normal, and sport. So for flying inside, it might be smart to put it into cine mode. That just helps slow down everything. So most of the time I just leave it on normal mode, but if I'm flying inside and I just wanna have things look more cinematic and be safer, then I'll drop it into cine mode. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get a set of prop guards and put them on your drone. And prop guards, they do exactly what it sounds like. They guard your props from hitting things. So this is very important when you're flying inside. You don't wanna crash into the walls. You can mess up the walls, you could damage your props. So prop guards are very, very helpful. They're usually labeled um, to show which side they go on. So this is the right front, it says RF, and you're just gonna wanna line up the motor pod, and you're just gonna wanna line up that motor pod until it fits, and then you're just gonna click it, there's a little latch, and it makes that sound. Sometimes it sounds like it's gonna break, but in my experience, that's just the sound that it makes, and these things are pretty tough. So I got that side on. And then this one says left front, so I'm going to put it on the left side. My left, your guys' is right. And put that over like that. Click it, super easy. These things have saved my drone a couple times. So props aren't that expensive, but crashing into walls are. And usually when I'm flying inside, I'm doing it to film properties, do real estate photography. So you definitely don't want to have to like get someone to patch up the house just because you didn't put on prop guards or you crash your drone into it. So definitely prop guards are a must. When flying indoors, I really like using a wide angle lens and I use these lenses from Freewell. They're nice enough to send me this package that comes with a wide angle lens, an anamorphic lens, and then some ND filters that actually clip onto those filters so you're able to bring the shutter speed down. As a drone pilot, the reason why I like to use these wide angle lenses is because it gives you a wider view. I guess that's kind of in the name. But the, the reason why it helps so much is because I end up looking at the screen a lot more than actually looking where the drone flies when I'm flying indoors. So when I'm flying out, like in the real world, I look up and down how you're supposed to, but flying inside, things can be so tight that um, I'm kind of worried more about crashing. So when I'm able to get a better view from the wide angle lens, it just makes me more confident and easy to make turns and fly over like small sections like this. So I definitely like having a wide angle lens when filming indoors. Another really cool part about this kit is it comes with ND filters that actually clip onto the front 
of these lenses. So you have the wide angle and you have the anamorphic. And if you're new to cameras or new to drones, uh, ND filter stands for neutral density. So it's really the letters ND. And what they are, it's very cliche to say, but they're like sunglasses for your drone. So my favorite thing about this filter is how you're able to attach the ND filter to the wide angle lens. And this is something that can be really easy and switch it out without actually having to take the lens off. So you can see it just clips on, just slides on straight like that. And it'll make a little click. And you can, you can kind of tell just how the lines are lining up if it's on there all the way. And I haven't had any negative effects where it's fallen off or anything like that. And the second reason that I like to use the wide angle lenses when flying indoors is for what the customer sees. So in real estate, you know, the agents, they want to show how like big and beautiful the house is. And with the wide angle lens, it just makes everything look less cramped and kind of no matter how big a house is when you're flying like a stock lens drone inside it will look kind of small unless it's like a mansion but still with a wide angle lens you really get that wider view and um, I find myself using it like all the time. Okay, so this just popped in my head, but here's the pro tip of the day. So even though we have the sensors turned off, the bottom sensor is still on. And I don't know of any way to take it off. So if you know, um, definitely drop down in the comments, but I'm pretty sure I've read that there's no way to turn it off. And why that, that is important is because when you're flying inside, let's say you're flying over something like this island or a table over there, when it, the bottom sensor senses something that's under it, the drone automatically flies up. So you need to remember that and be careful. So if you wanna fly over this island, I would fly over the side because if you thought you can make it through the middle, the drone will probably pop up. Okay, so I've given you guys all my tips and tricks of how to fly safely and successfully indoors with the prop guards, making the changes to the remote, and then also a wide angle lens. If you guys enjoyed this video and you found it entertaining or educational, give it a big thumbs up. Thank you, that means a lot to me. Subscribe down below if you wanna see more videos like these and then check those notifications so you will be notified when I upload my newest videos. As always, my name's Adam, fly safe, take care, peace.